Hello friends. Today I'll be speaking on transmit and QRO decomposition of matrices. Let's get started. I'll speak of a little introduction, types of matrices under consideration, QRO, then we'll look at QRO decomposition itself and some applications of this QRO some application of Grassmith process to QRO decomposition. In introduction, Grassmith process is one of the principal numerical algorithms for computing QRO factorization. And this household triangularization or transformation is one of the other algorithms for computing QRO factorization. In the QRO decomposition, our Q is an orthogonal matrix with orthonormal basis. R is, is a right upper triangular matrix. And we say a matrix A can be decomposed as A B equal to QR. We want to look at several cases of matrix. So considering a matrix A of n by m in that case our q factor if considering the q factor in the real space if a is a square matrix of which our n is equal to m then our q will give us for orthogonal unit vector such that our q transpose times q will be equal to q q transpose which is eventually give us an identity matrix here. In a case where our Q of size N by M and our M is not equal to N with orthonormal columns, then we'll have our Q transpose times Q will give us an identity matrix. And considering our R factor, our R factor will always be N by N right upper triangular matrix with the diagonals being non zero elements. And our R is always non singular matrices. And this is our QR decomposition. When you have a matrix A, you can decompose it with, with, the following columns that's a1 to a n we can decompose it toward the following columns that q1 to q n and in this our right upper triangular matrix are here so we want to understand how we'll be able to do the qr decomposition from this example as a considering the matrix b which is the whole of this that's four by three Using the Grassmith process, determine the QR factorization. To, to solve that, we rewrite our B we, into the following columns. That's B1, B2, B3. Where this is our B1 vector, B2 vector, and our B3 vector. So we now suppose another vector that's for to help to aid in the computation. We have V1, V2, V3 belonging to the V space of which they are a set of nonlinear independent vectors and our Q1, which we are interested in Q1, Q2, Q3, belonging to the Q matrix, also a set of orthonormal bases. So we then go ahead to solve the problem that has been given. So first of all, we let our V1 to be equal to B, which is the same as the matrix that we have here. We calculate our R11 index is the length of our V1 and that's the very true that we have here. If we find the length of it or the norm of it, we will get to that's what we have here. Okay, now having obtained our Q1 here, our our V1 here, we've, we know the length of or the norm of V1 is equal to 2. So 1 on 2 times our V1 vector here happens to give us our Q1. We then go ahead to find our V2, which it can be expressed as B2 minus the projection of B2 onto Q1. 
and we can rewrite our v2 as v2 minus a certain scalar of from our row 1 column element of row 1 column 2 times our q1 vector of which we have our b2 vector to be here this one and you find the inner product of the whole of this one we we'll get 4 so 4 times our q1 vector here when you do the simplification we'll be getting 1 1 1 1 here and having obtained our v2 we find the length of it or the number of it which gives us 2 okay. and also happens being able to obtain our v2 vector here we find we already know the length of it so we just multiply 1 over our 2 here which 2 is from the norm of 2 times our v2 vector here happens to give us our q vector here okay now we continue so to get our v3 we have pins to have our b3 minus the projection of b3 onto q1 minus the projection of b3 onto on q2 which we can rewrite this one as v3 as in the terms of this expression b3 minus a certain scalar r 1 3 times our q1 minus our the elements of row 2 column 3 from our right upper triangular matrix times our q2 vector of which q1 and q2 we already obtained it from our previous calculations so to get our r row 1 column 1 for the right upper triangular matrix is the inner product of q1 b3 on the inner product of q1 q2 q1 q1 which the denominator will give us one so we kind of focus on the numerator which is two when you come to the second element our r2 r2 row 2 column 3 element is the inner product of q2 b3 on q2 q2 which the denominator as well will also give us one so the numerator when you find the inner product of the numerator that's it also give us what eight then then we just substitute it back here which we know our q1 q2 and b3 so substituting it in substituting it here we eventually get this vector here that's our v3 vector we then go ahead to find the norm of it which eventually give us four And also obtaining our v3 vector, we know the norm of the v3 is 4. So 1 on 4 times our v3 vector here will give us our q3 vector here. So in conclusion, we say our vector, our matrix B can be decomposed to Q and R, R, which is the very solution that we happen to obtain here. Our Q as well are autonomous basis of which individual columns the dot product of them will be orthogonal to each other and this is our right upper triangular matrix of which the diagonals are non-zero the diagonals are always non-zero so in conclusion if this video happens to be of help to you please like share comment leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to this channel thank you god bless you